time for some R&R. This is for the readers and the real folk. This is for the readers and the real folk. This is for the readers and the real folk. Living from coast to coast. This is for the people. This is for the readers and the real folk. This is for the readers and the real folk. This is for the readers and the real folk. Living from coast to coast. This is for the people. It's time for some R&R. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My readers and real folk. I am your host. Manda Raquel Webb. Books, art, music, film, all together in one spot, celebrating us right here, right now. Every other week, it's all art and it's all good. Now it's time for some R&R. &R. Today on Readers of Real Folk, we discuss black books with AALBC's Troy Johnson. We uncover the exciting origins of black art in America with Najee Dorsey and DJ Haas presents the timely and poignant music video, Keep On, by DC-based songstress, Art Array. <laughs> Troy Johnson is the founder and webmaster of AALBC.com, the African American Literature Book Club. Launched in 1998, AALBC.com is the oldest, largest, and most frequently visited website dedicated to books by or about people of African descent. Troy is an avid reader and champion of black books who holds a master's degree in engineering and an MBA from New York University's Stern School of Business with over 20 years of corporate experience. As an educator, he teaches web design at Baruch's College of Zicklin School of Business, but his real passion is the business of books. So for our readers and real folk, Troy is the founder of African American Literary Book Club known as AALBC, and I'll have him tell you all about it. Uh, yeah, check out the shirt. <laughs> represent, I love it. Represent, Troy. Yep, yep, yep. And um, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about um all things black, black books, black people, black businesses. And so, Troy, again, thank thanks again for coming to the show. I know that I, you've seen a spike. I looked at your last newsletter, and you've seen a spike in sales in the past like weeks. Tell us about that. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, in in the this month alone, I've sold e far and away more books. Um, first in the last three weeks than I have sold in the previous five months. Um, the surge has been unprecedented and it's, it's, it's a surge and, you know, spike surge, spike kind of implies that it's just up and down, mm -hmm. but the surge has been pretty consistent over the last three weeks. And what do you think? well, it's, it's shared by other booksellers and it's a concerted effort of people to buy books from black owned booksellers. Now there's been a, a, a surge in interest uh, in books dealing with racism and the people who are buying those books, many uh, have told me uh, they are specifically trying to support uh, black bookstores. And, and that, that is the reason. Now, why the surge in anti-racism books? I'm sure it has to do with the murder of George Floyd in, in Minnesota. Um, but again, this is unprecedented because there have been other times where black men and women have been killed by police officers, uh, but this time is, is different. And I can't honestly say I know why. Perhaps the pandemic um, has, ex you know, people are, more people are at home, so they got to see it, more people got to see it. And uh, I guess people being closed up, the reaction was more visceral. Uh, you know, from the additional stress of being closed up. I really don't know, but um, sales have been going like, you know, I've been selling books like crazy. So tell our readers and real folk about African American Literary Book Club, because you've been a you've been around a while. Yeah, it's, it's, this year's my, will be the 23rd anniversary of the site. I started it back in 1997 to, you know, really as an experiment. I wasn't an avid reader. You know, I, I went to grad school and read plenty, uh, but not so much for fun. I started the site as an experiment because I had a sideline business selling, creating websites for other businesses. And one of my clients wanted to know how to make money on the web. 
Um, they had a website where they were selling things, but they weren't making any real money. So I decided, well, let me build a site to figure out how to make money. And I chose books and I immediately became my best customer because it's, um, I was discovering books and authors and ideas and, you know, literature that I just simply wasn't aware of. And, you know, it became a passion. And about 10 years after that, it became my livelihood. So I've been doing this full time uh, since 2008. And, um, you know, it's, you know, it's, I really enjoy um, every aspect of it, you know, from speaking to people like you and, you know, it's just, uh, been a great, great experience. Um, but what makes ALBC really unique is that, as far as I know, ALBC is the only website uh, that, you know, I built it. I built it from scratch. I'm the webmaster. Um, most other book sites are, you know, canned solutions uh, purchased from other vendors. Mm -hmm. um, and because ALBC is unique, I can present books in ways that, frankly, no other online bookseller can and uh and and that includes um, when i say can i mean so amazon can do it if they chose to they have the resources technology and development staff to do it but i'm the only website uh that is uh providing books in in ways that no other website is you know so i can um no other website is so i can um i can i have lists that show all of the say all of the Coretta Scott King Award winning authors. I have lists of all of the Black Caldecott Illustrator Award winners. I have lists of all the Black National Book Award winners. Uh, you know, it just so a combination of all of these books. I have lists of books read by the Go On Girl Book Club and Folk Tales out of Austin, Texas and, and other clubs. And so I can aggregate all of this information and present you know, I have a list of the most critically acclaimed books, which looks at all of these award-winning books, books that were selected by book clubs, my bestsellers list. So I can combine and aggregate and present information on books in very unique ways. And, and of course, I cover events and I, you know, shoot video and interview authors. And so I have over two decades worth of, of content, you know, over a thousand book reviews and you know, over 4,000 authors profiled. And, you know, so it's, it's a tremendous site. And, you know, you know, I, I tout it as the oldest, most frequently visited um, website dedicated to books by and about black people. And if there's one that's been, that's older and still running, I'm not aware of it. I know that people of color like to see themselves represented, whether it's on the screen or whether it's in a book. And you know you have um, you have successfully put both both of those things together in a place that is uniquely for and about people of color. So AALBC is subscription based. I know because I subscribe. But can you tell our readers and real folk um, the benefits of of subscribing? Well, we have a newsletter and it's free to subscribe. Although I encourage uh, subscribers uh, to actually pay for their subscription, but. Uh, several times, anywhere between one and four times a month, um, typically twice a month, we publish a newsletter, which uh, often includes the most recently reviewed books, uh, books that are coming out that are, are noteworthy, uh, recent interviews, um, information that I think that's important for readers to, to, to be aware of. So I think it's a great resource uh, for people who enjoy books written by or about people of African descent. I try to cover uh, several subjects in each newsletter. I try to uh, have books for children. I try to have something dealing with poetry and both nonfiction and fiction, uh, literary fiction, commercial fiction, or genre fiction. Um, so I try to have, you know, um, to cover some, something for everyone. And then I also try to have something that's newsworthy or, or noteworthy. Um, a lot of, I spend a lot of time um, talking about how Amazon, for example, has you know dominated and taken control of the black book ecosystem, and how that hasn't served us at all. Um, it, it, you know, so there's some educational things in the newsletter as well. Yeah, well, I appreciate it because uh, it's really tough when you're an independent author looking to get um, your book distributed in different places. 
and AALBC was one such place that you know that carried my books and you you know so I know that you work with fresh voices diverse voices up to you know the 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 royal the royalty of African American uh -huh. literature so uh -huh. that that in itself I mean the spectrum the the wide array that you present is just um it's it's wonderful so what is one of the most interesting interviews you've had uh, with an author I would go to an event you know maybe it's the uh, Austin African American Book Festival or maybe it's uh, the National uh, Book Club Conference or it could be Book Expo or wherever I go I like to sit down and and just put a camera on a, and a, on an author and let them introduce themselves and tell us why we need to read their books. Um, you know, and it's, so it's not technically an, an interview. Often I do do interviews, but it's just giving authors a platform to describe who they are and why their books are important. And one of the ways that the web has changed in recent years is that there are fewer of those platforms. Mm. Um, sure, social media exists. But the kind of things that a great website does, the kind of things that I can do on AOBC, I just simply can't replicate on Twitter or Instagram. Those platforms are designed to engage you, keep you engaged. And, you know, the type of content that's required to do that is not the kind of content that is best suited to profile or uh, promote or uh, explain to readers. Um, what, what an author does. So the interviews with authors that I enjoy the most are helping readers discover someone that they might not have known. So um, how, did, how did we get started? The concept started over dinner in Chicago with uh, members of Diaspora Rhythms and we had to figure out a way to expand the conversation past those four walls. In 2005, Satiri and I moved to, my wife Satiri and I moved to Atlanta to pursue my passion of being an artist uh, full time. After five years of traveling, you know, various circuits and roads and doing shows and meeting a lot of people, well, we found that there was a lack of representation and a platform for artists and collectors to kind of get together, meet, network, and expand the conversation. Thought of a name, thought of a concept, came up Black Art in America. Couldn't believe that that domain was available. I mean, I was just 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 floored. I remember the first show where we launched Black Art in America to the, to get some of the original content was at the Southwest Black Fine Arts Show that was held at the uh, African American Museum in Dallas, uh, put together by Frank Fraser. Um, noted artists and supporter, particularly of young artists. Uh, that's the be beautiful thing about Frank Fraser. He was a tremendous support to me and so many uh, many other artists. But we left uh, uh, the Southwest Black Fine Arts Show and we're within weeks on the Tom Joyner Cruise as one of the featured artists. I remember going up talking to um, uh, Malcolm Jamal Warner and, and Thelma from Good Time and, and some of the other um, celebrities that was on the show and asking them to give us uh, plugs uh, for Black Art in America and we was able to get that support. Even Common uh, gave us a video. So, you know, from the very start, it's always been about how, how a rising tide can raise all ships. And I think that's what uh, Black Art in America has proven to be, is a, is a platform for the artists to collect the, our community to share our stories. You've got the blue chip uh, art world, mainstream contemporary world. Uh, I primarily think of artists that are based in New York, represented by New York galleries. And you've got, you know, your self-contained artists, artists that are going, around, going out around the country doing art shows, festivals and fairs and having direct relationships with a number of collectors. I, a lot of my colleagues, um, that's how they got their start and continue to engage and, and build relationships with people to support their work. Uh, you've also got artists that are, you know, art educators, uh, maybe showing in various art deals around the country. So there's multiple, there's multiple art markets, multiple art worlds. I think the beauty about what we do with Black Art in America is that we get balance and a place to showcase 
you know, the spectrum of, of those various worlds. Uh, I'm, I'm really reminded of an example of that. Back in uh, 2000, I think it was 2011, the first time I went down to Miami for Basel, I uh, went to the art fair and I ran across two colleagues uh, who were covering Art Basel for the Brio and the Root. What I found out is that they, they didn't leave Art Basel, they stayed at the main fair. There was so much more art to see. You know, I, I, you know, I wanted to give everybody the full experience of what uh, Art Basel as well as that the Miami art community had to offer. So what Baya did was not only cover the work that was going on and being showcased at the main fair, but we got out in the community. We went to Little Hayden Cultural Center. We got with collectors. We got and did studio visits with artists uh, in that community. And we covered some of the satellite fairs. So I think that part of our mission is to give a more balanced approach and understanding to the fact that we got so many artists out here, so many various art communities and institutions, whether they be the National Museum of African American History and Culture or the Smithsonian's, or you're talking about Hammond's House uh, in Atlanta or Clark Atlanta University Art Museum or whatever, you know, at whatever level they may be uh, in the field, they're all needed. But they all need assistance. They all need to know that, you know, that they're there. That's the role of bio. We share their content, we share their stories, and, you know, we want to continue to do more of that. Hi, I'm Sybil Wilkes from the Tom Jordan Morning Show, and I collect art, I live art, and I live black art in America. Hey, this is Kim Whitley. Please support black art in America. Bam! There it is. Speaking of art, today we're taking a ride over to the capital city with the mesmerizing and timely video by DC's own classically trained singer, songwriter, Art O'Ray. The song is called Keep On, and in it, Art uses her breathtaking voice to take all who listen on an emotional journey, one inspiring us to keep on through the difficult times we're going through. So here she is, DC's own Art O'Ray is singing her latest musical inspiration. Keep on. Check it. Americans woke up to scenes of destruction once again today. On Brazil's front line, the casualties are mounting horrifically. 30 million people out of work. Tough times don't last long. Gotta keep on, keep on, keep on You are much stronger than you know You know, you know, you know The sun doesn't shine all the time shining, shining, shining. You gotta have the rain to help you grow Every day is a battlefield Feels like the world is after you you gotta put your armor on, you will make it through. Tough times don't last long, you gotta keep on, keep on, keep on. You are much stronger than you know, you know, you know, you know. Tough times don't last long, you gotta keep on, keep on, keep on. You are much stronger than you know, you know. I know it's been crazy, but you can't lose the pride in what you have and who you are. Continue to fight. I know that it's worn you down. You gotta fight to survive. 
of Readers and Real Folk. Remember, join us here at blackartinamerica.com for new episodes. And look, folks, if you like what you see here and you want the r r team to keep bringing you the latest in books, art, music, and film, please become a monthly supporter on our r r Patreon page. You can show us some r r love by going to our Patreon page and signing up for as little as a few dollars a month. That's right. We're counting on you so you can keep counting on us. So until next time, this is Monda Raquel Webb, your host, wishing you art, peace, and love. It's time for some r and This is for the readers and the real folk. This is for the readers and the real folk. This is for the readers and the real folk living from coast to coast. This is for the people. This is for the readers and the real folk. This is for the readers and the real folk. This is for the readers and the real folk living from coast to coast. This is for the people. This is for the readers and the real folk. This is for the readers and the real folk. This is for the readers and the real folk living from coast to coast. This is for the people.